What's up everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in. Welcome to episode 13 of the Jimmy Restoration Series. This is going to be a really fun video because we're going to fire up the new engine for the first time. As you can see, a whole lot has happened since the last episode. If you haven't checked that out, I put the link in the description box below. I basically took my Reman engine, built it up from there, added some fancy stuff, and it turned out fantastic, so you don't want to miss it. I apologize for the lack of content lately. Things have gotten super busy, not just with this, but I've been diving a little harder into the 240SX. I'll talk about that later on, and we are about to start building our new house, so there's been a lot of work surrounding that, so I appreciate y'all's patience. I wanted the focus of this video to be on firing this thing up for the first time, doing what we got to do to wrap things up after that, and getting it to the exhaust shop because I'm just ready to drive this thing. It's been sitting in the shop for far too long, I've put a lot of work into it, and I'm just ready to experience the, the culmination of all of that work, I guess. I didn't film a whole lot of the engine reinstallation process because one, I thought it was a little redundant since I've already done a video of pulling the old engine out and I just wanted to treat it as one big learning experience so instead of focusing on filming I focused on absorbing as much knowledge as I could which I think is going to really help for future content. There's going to be plenty of opportunities for engine installation stuff especially with that crew cab. At this point we have everything hooked up to enough of a degree where we can go ahead and do an initial test fire and make sure there are no obvious problems. Speaking of the crew cab, here's a sneak peek at one aspect of the build I'm quite pumped about. Not too long ago I picked up this 6 liter LQ4 V8 for it. I'm not exactly sure what my plans are for the engine quite yet, but I think it's safe to say we're going to have some fun. Of course, a big thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for their continued support, and a big thanks to you guys as well, not just for keeping up with the series, but for all of your comments, feedback, and constructive criticisms. It is all very much appreciated, especially when it comes to pointing out things that I did wrong. That's especially important. In the last video, for example, I had to modify two spark plug ends that unfortunately I did wrong. Several people pointed it out, and I have since gotten that taken care of. Also, in my front suspension and steering rebuild video, someone mentioned that a lot of the play from the steering is probably coming from the worn out rag joint. It was indeed quite toast, so I figured out how to swap that out with a new rag joint, got that all taken care of, so again, many thanks. Right now I'm waiting on my friend Joseph to get here. He's been a huge help throughout this entire process. Dude is like an encyclopedia on all things S10s and Blazers and Jimmys, you name it. He's also going to be helping me a lot on the Crew Cab S10 build, which we hope to start really hitting hard sometime this summer. I'll keep you guys up to date on that, but while we wait for him, let's take a detailed look at where we are currently. Like I said, we're at the point where we can do an initial test fire, but I've done a lot more to this thing aside from just getting the engine back in. For example, I restored the core support. So, stripped it down, repainted it, added all new rubber pieces. There's a new radiator, a new condenser. Looks really good. I'm also in the process of doing a big three upgrade to help support the upcoming audio system. I've already talked about this custom high output alternator in the last video, so be sure to check that out. But I have upgraded power wire from the battery to the alternator and upgraded grounds from the battery to the chassis and to the engine. There's also going to be a frame ground at some point when we add the second battery, but I'll talk about that in another video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up a few things before Joseph gets here. For one, I need to go ahead and start routing new vacuum lines. Even though everything in this truck was in good working order before we took everything apart, the thing's from 1993. The vacuum lines are starting to get a little dry rotted, so just for some preventative maintenance, start routing new hoses and hopefully won't have any vacuum related issues going forward. Before we test fire this thing, we need to prime the engine. I've already filled it up with Valvoline VR1. In this case, I'm using 10W30, but there are a handful of different viscosities available depending on the application. VR1 is technically branded as a racing oil, but because of its high zinc content, I'm going to be using it as a break-in oil. That high zinc provides a lot better anti-wear protection. It's got some friction modifiers and stuff, which is all really important when breaking in a new engine, especially high performance applications and if you have flat tappet cams. 
The Jimmy doesn't have any of that, we're just going for the anti-wear protection. For priming the engine, there's actually a special tool in this case that you can get. It attaches to a drill and it sticks down in the hole where the distributor shaft would go. Basically, you put it on top of the oil pump, spin the drill, and it pumps oil all throughout the engine so when you do that first startup, everything is properly lubricated. Alright, here we go. You're right under 40. Cool. Sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> Heck yeah. That worked perfect. Now that everything's primed, add a little bit more oil and get it back up to the normal level. All right, guys, moment of truth. We are going to do a quick test fire of the new engine. There's still a lot of things that need to be finalized. We need to hook the alternator up, do some vacuum line stuff like that. Um, we also got to burp the cooling system, but we can't really do much of that until the exhaust is on it. Um, once we get that done, then we can do the AC charge, the alternator will get hooked up before it goes for exhaust. But then we can burp the cooling system, get the AC charged, get all the vacuum lines, all that hooked up. Right now all the vacuum ports are plugged on the intake. So this is literally fired up, make sure we ain't got anything crazy going on, no major fuel leaks or anything like that, and to make sure our firing order and all that's right. Um, it's set at a base time, it's just kind of eyeballed. We will time it afterwards because you got to time it when it's warm. So. And it's going to be loud. Very loud. <laughs> <laughs> just remember. You put this together. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, right? None. Go for it. Do it again. I know what it is. What? The distributor is 180 degrees out on timing. That's why it's only that? popping off one cylinder. Oh. If we were crossed up on wires, yeah, it would pop off on two to three cylinders, and it would have tried to fire. Uh -huh. Being that it's only popping once, we're 180 degrees out, so i got to lift the distributor back up out, spin it around. Oh, okay. Yep. Nothing too horribly major. Woo! Not end of days. End of days. <laughs> I'm, we unhooked fuel. We're gonna roll it over and see exactly when it's firing or sparking. Pretty damn close. Sweet. Let me retard it down a little. I want it to fire, but I don't want it to fire hard. Yeah. smoke <laughs> engine smoke <laughs> don't breathe this Good smoke <laughs> <laughs> sweet so it fires and it runs all right <laughs> so what's next um i've got to get down here and get the uh timing wire unconnected or disconnected so it'll lose computer advance 
once we do that, then we can set the base timing on it. While Joseph has fun with that, I'm going to continue getting everything taken care of up here. So I just fitted the intake before doing that, went ahead and swapped the filter with a K&N replacement. I also replaced the intake air temperature sensor and just gave everything a nice thorough cleaning. We have redone all of the vacuum lines, so that's all nice and fresh. What you're doing is you're releasing that clip. Oh. Neat. Yep. Yep. The latch is right there, down on the fender. It's the little details, you know. Right on your side? Yep. Start it. Fast forward a couple days and we have a fully custom exhaust system. All the parts that I got you can get through O'Reilly, super simple, but instead of clamping it all together I just took it to a shop to have it all welded and whatnot. It ended up taking the shop a lot longer than I thought it would so I wasn't able to film any of the process, but once I get the Jimmy off of the trailer and back on the lift I'll give you guys a detailed look at everything that went into the exhaust system. Plus there's still a handful of things that Joseph and I need to get taken care of before we can actually take the maiden voyage out on the road. So let's get to it. First order of business, shim that starter. Yes, yes. So basically after the starter engages, it's not coming back all the way and that's what's making that shattering, right? Right, that's just just lined up to where the flywheel is actually rubbing on the tooth or the gear on the starter. Oh, I got you. So we'll throw that thing in there and it'll give us some room. All right, let's slide up underneath this thing. Check out the fresh exhaust. So what you see right here is the center section of the Y pipe. The ends that are coming down basically come right off of where the headers exit. Get that on both sides. You can see that brand new front drive shaft looking really nice. Continuing on back, we have that high flow catalytic converter. All new brackets. Magna Flow 3 chamber muffler and then it comes over the axle there into a little corner exit similar to what it originally had from the factory. You ready? Yes sir. Much better. The rubber flexible piece between the intake manifold and the plenum was definitely in due for a replacement. Turns out O'Reilly actually had these in stock, so direct replacement, pop the old one out, new one in, some new clamps, looks good. 
So I put brand new knock sensors on this thing, but I didn't notice until later that this connector was pretty much done. <laughs> Lots of years of being exposed to heat. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off and solder this new one on. Cut both of them. Yep. You twist it and wrap it around. Now you still got the other half of the X. Twist that one, wrap it around. You're using the ball that you put on that when you tin it. It's almost like a heat sink for the wire. The wire lays in it and it just gets hot. Yep, you're good. It's just one of those things, I guess. Just be careful and don't hold it on too long. That's right. That looks good. That's it. Sweet. So we had that check engine light on. I figured that was probably because the knock sensor or the oxygen sensor wasn't in place, but because those two are taken care of now, it is still on, so you have a trick to figure it out. Yep, um, a lot of people don't realize with an OBD-1 system, you can pull codes. You don't, all you need is a paper clip, short piece of wire, something like that. Um, now that that stuff's plugged in, OBD-1 doesn't really store any memory. Being that it doesn't store any memory, and it's a hard code every time we turn the key on, we're gonna jump the two posts and plug and get the code out of it. All you do is jump these top two posts, which is A post, B post, and the OBD-1 plug, and then you turn your key on and you count your pulses. You'll have uh, quick spacing, short, or long spacing, and that's your numbers. Once you have those numbers, then you can look it up on the chart. The biggest thing is, is don't ever start it with that jumped. If you jump, or if that's jumped and you start it, your ECM makes this really high-pitched squeal noise and it's not good. <laughs> but that's in, so here we go. Immediately it went out. One, one, two. So that's one code. One, one, two. It should cycle the number three times and move to the next number. Twenty-two. That's four. One, two. Forty-two. That's forty-three. And now it's back to 12. So the codes we've got are a 12, 22, 42, 43. So I already pulled it up earlier. 12 is no distributor reference. Diagnostic test active. Oh, 12 is when you get into the ECM. It's letting you know you're into that code part of okay. it. Okay. 22, throttle position sensor error. 42, ignition bypass circuit error. 43, knock sensor error. Now the ignition bypass sensor circuit error may have been from when we unplugged the advance. Yeah. Um, knock sensor, that makes sense because it was unhooked. Mm -hmm. So we go back to 22, throttle position sensor error, signal low. We may have a bad sensor. We can test that. Okay. So let's test that and see what we get. So the voltmeter I had actually didn't end up working, so my good friend Justin, he's the manager at the local O'Reilly store, got us over a voltmeter real quick. Got a 5 volt reference. Okay. What's that mean? It means you got power coming from the ECM like it should. Okay, so we're going to give this a try. This is another brand new TPS sensor. We concluded that the one that I installed in the last video is actually a faulty part. We took the one off of the white jimmy back there and that actually wasn't performing up to proper specs, but it actually was giving us a reading on the multimeter. So we're gonna swap this in and see what happens. Sweet. Of course, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I would have some 240SX updates, so before we close out the video, let's switch gears real quick and talk about what's going on. 
The reason why there hasn't been any content on this car since the exhaust install is just because I didn't realize just how far behind I was until I really started diving into it one day and I was like, you know what? This is gonna take forever if I don't just dedicate my time to it for a little while. So I didn't film any videos, didn't film any car reviews, didn't pay attention to social media all that much. Just dedicated myself fully to researching, finding out what I still needed. So golly, <laughs> just so we can get this thing running. I'm sure a lot of you with long-term projects are going to know exactly what I'm talking about, but it gets to a point where you just start to get overwhelmed and not bummed out, but just like, oh my gosh, when is it ever going to end? Because you spend money, you work on it, you spend money, you work on it, and things take so long, especially with something like this where you're working on an engine that wasn't originally sold in the United States, putting an engine into a car where it wasn't meant to go in the first place and having to do and order a whole bunch of uh, custom work and parts and stuff. It's just like, man. I just want to hear it test fired. That's it. I don't know how many videos I'm going to make on it between now and the time we get it fired up. I was originally shooting for Memorial Day weekend, but I really don't know if that's going to happen. So I'll just keep you guys up to date on that. But I have been making really good progress and collecting all of the rest of the parts that I need to hopefully make the rest of the reassembly process just a little bit easier. One of the ways that I'm trying to simplify things is to get rid of as much old junk that I can and just clean up the engine bay. I still have to pull all this stuff back out so we can give the whole bay a nice fresh repaint, but I have a ton of stuff that I've been getting from Chase Bays lately. They've had fantastic customer service and are really helping me get in the right direction of figuring out what I do and don't need, so I really, really appreciate that. But here's the tentative location for the coolant overflow bottle. I have their tucked radiator with two fans. The bottom section still needs to be tucked this way a little bit. I'm working on that, but power steering fluid reservoir. There's gonna be a brake booster delete kit over there amongst a whole bunch of other things which are on this table. So there's the booster delete kit. I also have their clutch master cylinder kit. A bunch of other things. Here's my fans that I have to put on the shroud. I'm getting ready to reassemble the Greddy intake manifold and possibly get it powder coated. And I've tracked down all of the new sensors for the RB25. Shockingly enough, I have something special ordered from Japan right now, but this is my little little pile of goodies right there. So by the time all of this is said and done, every sensor will be brand new. It's gonna be really fresh, so hopefully we don't have any like, I mean, there's gonna be a little stupid issue here and there, there always is, but trying to do at least some preventative maintenance. I really appreciate you guys listening to my constant rambling. There was just a lot of stuff that I needed to go over that I didn't wanna make like a whole update video on. Any content that I make on this going forward, I want it to be progress, like, big progress between now and getting it running. I really don't know what kind of content I need to focus on, so if you want to see anything specific from assembling the Greddy Manifold to finishing the tucked radiator or whatever else, let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate it. There's just a whole lot going on all the time, so it's just hard to keep up sometimes, but I appreciate it. Well guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. The Jimmy is turning out fantastic. I wish I was at the point where I can do some revs for you guys and, and really see what this new exhaust sounds like, but we still have to break it in and I can't really drive it on the road yet until I take care of the rest of the body mount bushings and the brakes. I've already installed the first two poly bushings in the core support, but I can't tighten those down because it's gonna misalign the front end with the rest of the vehicle and things just aren't gonna fit right. So it needs to be all done at the same time. But of course, that just means there's more video content on the way. So if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. There's always a lot more where that came from, not just with the Jimmy, but got some stuff coming with the 240SX and it won't be too long before we really start kicking off that crew cab. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, constructive criticism, don't forget to post them down below. If you enjoyed the video, also don't forget to leave a like. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for your continued support. And again, a big thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for all of their support as well. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.